Now, an estimated 70% of Nigerians are said to live in rural areas. This means that they do not have ready access to formal banking facilities the way those of us in urban areas do, as a result of which many of them turn to local saving schemes. Now, these local saving options are not available only to people who live in rural areas because you'll find that a large number of people in the urban areas, especially people who are self-employed, like artisans, entrepreneurs, business people, and so on and so forth, also get involved in these local saving schemes and actually seem to prefer them to the regular banking facilities that are available out there. Before I joined us, so my life was scattered. I can look at my bank statement and I'll think and I'll say, I got 12 million the last year. Not kidding. That means if I was to break it down, I had like an average of 1 million a month. That's as if I'm, a, I'm an oil worker. But yet I'm broke. I have nothing. I've just been spending as it comes, spending as it comes. And then my then manager, her name is Pat, advised me to join the Susus. And I told her, beggar. And then I did. When I did, I realized I could use the Osusu to say, let me, let me travel with my children, let me travel with my son, that time I just joined to America, let me do this, let me do that, because I could use my Osusu for something, but then, before then, when a particular bill is coming, say rent, I'll be thinking, oh, I have to save up for this, or you'll now see me opening, trying to or use an old account to try to save up there. To say oh, the rent is in two months' time, it's in three months' time, and then you see me so stressed, gathering, I'm so broke. But the Osusu has a way of just organizing you without the too much organization, too much stress, too much thinking. Because you know you have to pay a particular money every month, mm -hmm. and it's a must. Of course, today we are talking about local saving schemes. My name is Deva, continue to watch like share comment and if the channel and my content makes any sense to you kindly subscribe okay that is how the channel grows now these local saving platforms are usually run by a group of people who know each other and possibly work together or belong to a common sector or community the convener of the local saving scheme is usually the person who will outline terms and conditions as the leader of the group. In the north, it has the generic name Adashi or Adashe. The Yoruba call it Esusu or Ajo, while amongst the two, it is known as Bam and so on and so forth. So if you had any you know, worries or concerns, like you didn't really know what I was referring to. Having used these local terms, I'm sure you now have a better idea. These informal savings or contribution platforms also sometimes provide soft loans at low payback rates and should therefore not be sneered at. Many individuals have been able to use them as a means to raise capital for projects and even to invest in high-yielding ventures. Mariam Abopo is currently the convener of one of these contribution schemes. We have several forms of adashi that I run for my friends. Basically, I use WhatsApp, so we have groups on WhatsApp, and uh, depending on the amounts people are willing to contribute, we have them differently. There are people who are contributing 1,000 weekly. There are people who are contributing 2,000 weekly. There are people who are contributing 5, 20. Some of us are doing it uh, monthly as well. So we have a system where we agree on a, on a week to pick. If it is 5 weeks, 10 weeks to run. Uh, if it is 11 months, 6 months to run. 
then we all pick a date, a convenient date, maybe because we have goals and targets towards that. Or if we are working towards a particular amount of money to do something now, this is where the co uh, communal goal is. So we save a particular amount of money depending on the duration towards that. So that is how we run it. We have it on the on on WhatsApp, and for now we are working with people. We personally know. It's, it's really been so useful because it's a means of savings, actually. The contribution is a means of savings. It's not easy to save money these days. Sometimes you want to ha do a project or you just want to save because when you keep the money idle in the bank, you kind of start picking it up and the rest. So it's a form of way to compile and have a bulk amount of money at your disposal at a particular point within the year, depending on maybe you have a goal, you have a plan, or you just want to save money. Uh, can you give us instances of how you've used your savings? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, I've, I've used mine you know, for business. I've, uh, I've used it to stock, uh, stock, uh, to buy more stock for my business. I've used it to invest in uh, other things as well. So basically those are the two things I, I use my money for. In fact, my fourth car was bought with the proceeds of just such the contribution scheme, you know, we got together, there were about 11 of us in the office, you know, we got together, contributed a certain sum of money, and I made sure I was last, because when you're the last person to collect, it feels as if you have been saving the whole time and you just, you know, got the money back. When you're the first person, it feels rather like a loan that you have to keep paying back over a period of months. So that was how I got my first car. Now, while it's a very popular personal finance kind of thing and it's been around forever. It's a cultural thing, it's traditional or I believe that practically every ethnic group in Nigeria practices it in one form or another. Now, despite all of those things, it does come with downsides. Like for instance, if one of the contributors suddenly dies or suffers some serious misfortune, so there's that. You know, after the person collects the money, something really nasty happens to that person. That's one thing to look out for. Then, of course, there are instances of fraud where some people collect their own portion and then refuse to pay back, sometimes fall off the face of the planet and just disappear. There's also that. Then sometimes the convener of the group is fraudulent and gets people together in order to rip them off. So this is not something you go into blindly. And in fact, Mariana has a similar unpleasant experience to share with us about this you know, local saving scheme. You might want to hear what happened to her. I think I've had only one. And uh, that particular group contribution was not run by me, but I was a part of it. And uh, we, there was an issue, somebody collected and uh, he was not able to pay, I, it was, but it was only me that was affected. And possibly maybe because he knows me, I'm a little bit soft-minded, it's it just me that didn't get, everybody got their money except me. And the other unpleasant situation where, it's, where people do not maybe pay on time, and I said, most of these two, these two uh, situations that have happened, not on my own scheme run by me, but on other platforms, because I also join other people's contribution as well. For me, immediately I put you on the group, the riot act is red, and I encourage us all, you need to be committed, because it's all about commitment. I cannot run a group... Uh, and, and have just anybody, random people know. If I don't know you, I try to ensure I get somebody that knows you, even if it is to ask you to give me a guarantor. Check, maybe we, are you, if you know me, then definitely you, we, we have a common friend or family. Get me that person, let the person vouch for your thing because it's a matter of integrity. People trust me to agree to be on my platform and since I'm coordinating. So the coordinator is also a very key aspect of this. If you are not able to enforce and say no, the last pay date is 5th of the month, of the new month, and you, you are not going to allow anybody to let go, not allow any other excuses. Excuses can always come, but I tell people you need to be committed. It's about commitment. So you see, when talking about things like this, it's always good to explore the pros and cons. And the reality is the pros for these local savings schemes seem to outnumber the cons. 
as a result of which it seems as if a number of fintech organizations, when we say fintech, we're referring to financial technology. You know, anytime you do something digital online that's financial, it has something to do with fintech. That's the most lay way I can define it. So many of these fintech organizations nowadays seem to have borrowed a leaf from these local savings schemes, contribution schemes, and so on and so forth, because they have options where you can go into a daily savings thing, you can do it weekly or monthly, they're way more flexible than your regular banks are. And, you know, it's catching on. People are patronizing them. Some of the more reliable ones that I've done my research and come up with are CarryWise, Piggyvest, Investment One, Colope, I Invest, Sumo Trust, Kuda Bank, and a lot by Wema. I personally am currently using Piggyvest, which is working fine. I started using it at the beginning of this year. I programmed it to take a small amount of money from my account daily. I made sure it was a small amount because the, this is my first time going into it and I don't want to have any unpleasant surprises. I did do my research first, yeah? I did my research online. I spoke to a number of people who have also used it before getting involved myself. So what has my experience with Piggyvest been like? It's been reliable. Now, on my end, what happened was that I noticed that after 28 days, it stopped deducting the amount automatically. Now, the minute I noticed that I got across to their customer care, they put me through on what to do. I did it and the automatic deductions have continued. So it's, uh, it's been just a couple of months. The experience so far has been okay. That said, I am not vouching for any of the platforms, okay? I don't have a stake or an interest in any of them. And I would strongly recommend that before you patronize any of them, be it the local saving schemes, be it the fintech ones, do your research. Don't just do research online. Talk to people who may have actually gone through, you know, the process and can give you first-hand, you know, experience about what they went through before you also get involved. And particularly with regard to fintech, we will be taking a closer look at how they operate. One thing I want you to understand is that with these fintech entities and any regular bank, if you take a loan, do not expect them to be as soft as is sometimes the case with the local saving schemes. That is not how these corporate ones function. So you need to keep that at the back of your mind, okay? And as I was saying, I aim to take a closer look at the fintech organizations, see how they function, you know, what keeps them ticking, is it the kind of thing you want to get involved in, and so on and so forth. Is it reliable? What is, uh, what is the central bank, for instance, saying about them? So I'll take a closer look at fintech, you know, a little later in the course of my videos on this channel. So if that's the kind of thing interests you, along with personal finance, saving tips, money tips, and so on and so forth, then you need to stay, remain tuned to this channel as we continue to bring you that kind of content. My name remains Devan. Continue to watch, like, share, comment, and if the content makes sense to you, remember to subscribe because that is how the channel grows. See you again next week. Thank you.